Welcome to class today, geometry students, on Wednesday the 30th. Hope you guys are doing well. <coughs> Let's go over some quick announcements here for today. Um, first of all, uh, you will have a test next Tuesday and Wednesday. So please keep in mind, Tuesday will be the fill in the blanks. I'll just put fill blanks here. And so on Tuesday, fill in the blanks. And you'll also work on the review sheet that day too because the fill in the blanks won't take that long. And then Wednesday will be the math part of the test okay so test next Tuesday and Wednesday will be one test taken over two days so it'll be one test grade okay all right my pen is not working here hopefully it'll straighten up let's continue on okay um, also turn in Monday's homework it is due today page 260 numbers 10 through 23 all and 29 through 32 all now some of you already turned that in so if you did you're totally fine but if you did not please turn that in now at this time all right now if you have not had your quizzes passed out to you yet then I want you to pause the video and ask Mr. Harmon or your supervising teacher uh, where your papers are you should have your quizzes passed out from yesterday Jason of course yours did not count you have until Friday to make it up I will not have a makeup quiz ready for you um, until Thursday so the earliest you can take it is Thursday the latest you can take it is Friday and you're welcome to keep the quiz that I'm passing back out to you today and you can kind of use that to help you study for the makeup quiz okay let's go ahead and get out your quizzes and go over them at this time you will not need to open your books unless you want to um, you don't have to but you're welcome to uh, so go ahead and get out your quizzes and let's go over those by the way the lowest grade was an 86 um, y'all did really well on it and so let's go ahead and see if we can't help you uh, find your mistakes. All right. All right, let's go ahead and go over your quiz. Let's start with numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, in the directions, it gave you this right here. It said triangle ABC is congruent to triangle QPR. Now, I think, uh, Jason, of course, your quiz did not count. I think you struggled a little bit with this, so please pay attention and watch and learn here, okay? Um, angle R is congruent to what angle? Well, if you'll look down here, notice R is the third letter over, 1, 2, 3. So over here, the third letter over is A, B, C. So angle R is congruent to angle C. So the answer here is angle C. Okay? How about side A, B? Well, look, A, B is the first two letters here. So what's the first two letters over here? Q, P. So side A, B is congruent to side QP. Now, triangle BAC is congruent to what triangle? Well, come on, think this through now. Triangle BAC is congruent to triangle. Now, B is the first letter. Look at your congruence statement they gave you here in the directions, okay? B corresponds with what letter? Here's B corresponds with P. So if B is first, then P has to come first. Next is A. Well, let's come up here and look what letter corresponds with A. A corresponds with Q. And so if A is second, then Q is second. And then next right here is C. Well, C corresponds with R. And so if C is here, then R goes here. So there we go. All right. Now let's take a look at number four. <coughs> We have triangle RPQ. Triangle RPQ, so I'm going to go ahead and put a triangle here. Triangle RPQ. Now R comes first, so look at R down here. R is the third letter over. R corresponds with C. So if R is first, then C comes first. The next letter here is P. Now notice P corresponds with B. Talk to your mom. P corresponds with B. So if I have P here, then B would come next. Now, Notice my next letter here is Q, and Q corresponds with A. So if Q is last, then A is last. There we go. I mean, really not that bad. The key to the entire problem was using this congruence statement that they gave you at the beginning. Okay? All right. Number five, write a congruence statement for the triangles given. All right, no problem. Here we go. I'm going to write this triangle first, EFG. Now, you did not have to write triangle EFG first. You could have written triangle ZXY or XYZ or GFE. It doesn't matter. I just chose to write triangle EFG first. Okay? Now, notice E is first. 
and here's E right here, and how many slashes does E have? Two. So what angle up here has two slashes? Y. So E and Y go together, so if E is first, then Y comes first. Now look at your second letter right here, F. F has one slash. So which angle over here has one slash? Well, X does. So F and X go together, they're corresponding angles. So if F is here, then X goes here. And then lastly, G. G has three marks. What angle over here has three marks? Z does. So G and Z go together. So if G is last, then Z is last. So there you go. That's a congruent statement. Now, you could, there could have been more than one answer to this. That's just the one that I used. All right. Let's go on to 6 and 7. Now, on 6 and 7, they want us to state whether these two triangles are congruent. And if they are, what theorem or postulate did we use? Well, look, students, we have an angle and then a side and then a side. Angle, side, side, congruent to angle, side, side. Guys, we have never learned a postulate or theorem that's side, side, angle. The ones we have learned are side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, and hypotenuse leg. We have never learned one that's side, side, angle, or angle, side, side, either way. So no, now these triangles might be congruent, but we can't say for sure, so we say no, we're not for sure. Now number seven over here, please notice how they share a common side right here. If I were to split these two triangles up, there's one of them, and there's the other one. Notice I can put one slash here and one slash here, two slashes here, two slashes here, and then notice the two triangles share this side right here, so I can put three slashes here, and three slashes here. So yes, I can definitely state that these two triangles are congruent because I have three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides over here. We call that side, side, side. Okay? Let's take a look at number eight. Now here I have a side, then an angle, and then a side congruent to a side, then an angle, and then a side. And yes, we definitely have a theorem or a postulate that says that. So yes, the two triangles are congruent and the reason would be side, angle, side. <coughs> okay, the rest of the quiz is done the exact same way. Let's take a look at number five. Now I'm going to very quickly split up number five. Here's the bottom triangle right here, and here's the top triangle right here. And notice we have this side here marked congruent to this side here, and notice they share side AC. So I can put two slashes here and two slashes here. Students, I have nothing else. I have no angles. I have no other sides. All, all that I have is side side. And we know of no theorem um, in which we can prove or state for sure that two triangles are congruent if we have two sides of one triangle congruent to two sides of another. So no, we do not know for sure that these two triangles are congruent. Now number six. <coughs> Notice we have Angle, angle, side, congruent to angle, angle, side. So we can definitely state that these two triangles are congruent because we have an angle and an angle and a side congruent to an angle, angle, side. So yes, these two triangles are congruent, angle, angle, side. Number seven. Now it would be very helpful if you split these two triangles up, so I'm going to split them up. I have two marks here, two marks here, one mark here, one mark here. Notice both triangles share this side, so I know this side is congruent to this side. Look what I have. Angle, side, angle, congruent to angle, side, angle. So yes, these two triangles are congruent, angle, side, angle, definitely. Okay, number eight. <coughs> now it would be helpful if we split these two triangles up. So there we go. And there we go. Now, let's see, we have, notice they both share this side here. So slash here, slash here, actually two slashes. And notice I have a slash here already and one here. Now, we have a theorem that can only be used on right triangles. And it's called the HL theorem. Now, that's what you had to use, not side-side angle. Okay, one of you put that, and that's not correct. 
side-side angle is not one of the methods we've learned to prove that triangles are congruent. So, um, now look, in order to use HL, you have to have two right triangles, and we do have two right triangles. You have to have one hypotenuse congruent to the other hypotenuse. We have that right here and right here, and you have to have one leg congruent to one leg, and we have that right here and right here. So yes, we can definitely state these two triangles are congruent, and it's the HL postulate. Okay, on up here to number nine. Now, this is going to be a pretty tough one here, but let's see what we can do. Notice I have, um, see the arrow? There's an arrow on this line and an arrow on this line, so I have parallel lines. And then they're going to be cut by a transversal right here. So here's a transversal, okay? So remember, whenever you have two parallel lines, I'm going to go ahead and do this in red so you can see it a little better. <coughs> Whenever you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles are congruent. So this angle here is congruent to this angle right here. Now I'm going to erase all that and I'm going to mark the angles congruent. So what that means is, is this angle here is congruent to this angle here. And then also don't forget, vertical angles are congruent. So I can definitely state these two are congruent. So what I have is angle, angle, side. Look, in this top triangle here I have angle, angle, side, congruent to angle, angle, side. So yes, I can definitely state that 9 has two congruent triangles based on angle, angle, side. And then one more and we're finished, number 10. Now, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and split these two triangles up. We have one triangle here and the other triangle here. Notice we have all the angles congruent. And notice they share this side here. So this side is congruent to this side. Now please look at what you have here, students. I have an angle and a side and an angle congruent to an angle and a side and an angle. So yes, we can definitely state that these two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. Definitely. Okay, so there, we've gone over your quiz. We've got to hurry now. I'm going to go ahead and warn you. We have a really long, uh, we have a really long lesson to cover today. I'll take the whole class period. We're going to look at three or four proofs. Um, however, there's no homework. No homework. Okay, so catch that. Be encouraged. Tomorrow, there's no notes. Tomorrow, Thursday, there's no notes. Just homework only. So hang in there. Take some really good notes. If you don't finish the video, even though it's a Wednesday night, I want you to finish it tonight at your house. You should be able to finish it. But if you don't, you'll probably just have like five or ten minutes left. Finish it tonight. You do need to finish the video. And then tomorrow, all that we're going to have is homework. All right? I am going to go pretty fast. Um, so here we go. Let's quickly review. I am going to go fast. You understand that. And... Um, if I go too fast, just pause the video. Remember, we have looked at writing, writing congruent statements. And so, um, remember, I give you two triangles, and you write something like triangle ABC is congruent to triangle whatever it might be, MXY, okay? We did that on your quiz, and we've learned how to do that. Number two, listing out congruent parts of two triangles. So if I tell you two uh, triangles are congruent, you should be able to list out the angles that are congruent. There'd be three sets of angles that are congruent. And you should be able to list out the three sides, the three sets of sides that are congruent. Okay, so we've learned how to do that. Number three, we've learned five ways to prove that two triangles are congruent. Side, side, side. Side, angle, side. Angle, side, angle. Angle, angle, side. And hypotenuse leg. Those are the five ways that we've learned to prove that two triangles are congruent, okay? Today we are going to look at how to use congruent triangles. So now we're going to switch gears. Hang with me, take some good notes, back up the video, listen to it whenever you're confused, listen to what I say again if you have to, and understand what we're doing. Today we're going to use congruent triangles, okay? We're going to use congruent triangles. So with that in mind, please copy this heading down. Uh, using congruent triangles, the lesson is 5.5, and the date today is the 30th. 
10.30. Now, while you're writing that down, let me ramble. One of you emailed me a couple of days ago and said, you're really struggling with the proofs. And I look, I emailed this student back. I said, first of all, um, you can do really well in the class and not do well on your proofs. I don't put many of those on tests and quizzes. I don't make them very hard, the ones I do put on there. And I grade them very kindly. So if you're struggling with proofs, we are going to do a lot of them today. But just take notes and listen. Take notes and listen. Take notes and listen. And if you're, and the more you do them, the more you'll understand them. And if you're struggling with those, just keep working at it. That should not be something that will cause you to fail the class or affect your grade um, a whole lot. Okay, so the date is the 30th, 10, 30, 13, using congruent triangles, lesson 5-5. Five, five. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. If I Write this in your notes, please. If I told you triangle ABC is congruent to triangle MPX, if I told you that, write that down, please. If I gave that to you, right away you should be able to do this. You should right away be able to list out angle A is congruent to angle M. Write that down, please. Angle B is congruent to, sorry, my pen is messing up. Angle B is congruent to angle P. And angle C is congruent to angle X. You should be able to do that by now. A goes with M, B goes with P, and C goes with X. Okay, we've been over that before. And you should be able to list out the sides also. The first two letters are AB. So I would say side AB is congruent to side MP. And the next two letters are BC. So I would say side BC is congruent to, last two letters are BC, last two letters are PX, so side PX. And then I would say AC go together, so side AC would be congruent to side MX. So you should be able to do that. So what I'm trying to show you here is this. You do understand, don't you, that when two triangles are congruent, we can then state that all their parts are congruent. Let me say that again. It's real important that you see that. Whenever we know that two triangles are congruent, we then immediately know that all of their corresponding parts are congruent. We know that two angles are congruent. Two more angles, two more angles. We know the two sides are congruent. Two more sides are congruent. Two more sides are congruent. We know all of that as soon as we know that two triangles are congruent. Do you get that? Okay. Now, we have a name for that. If you want to write that down, it's called CPCTC. So please write that down. And what it stands for is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let me say that again. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, when we do proofs in a second, instead of writing all those words out, you're welcome just to say CPCTC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, please listen to me. Here's what I'm saying. As soon as you know that two triangles are congruent, you can then state that different parts are congruent by this reason right here, CPCTC. And I'm going to get into that a little bit later, so don't be worried if you don't totally understand. Just know what it stands for. It stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay? Now let's continue on. I want you to copy these, t these two triangles in your notes, please. Copy these two triangles in your notes. Now you know me. I'm going to go ahead and keep moving here, but um, copy these triangles down. And then I have a question for you. What would you do if I asked you to prove that angle B right here is congruent to angle E right here? What would you do if I asked you to prove that this angle here is congruent to this angle here? I mean, right now, to be honest with you, there isn't a lot you can do, is there? I'll leave that there. There we go. There's really not a lot you can do. I mean, look, we know that A is congruent to D. We know that C is congruent to F. And we know that this side right here, AC, is congruent to this side here, FD. But we do not know that angles B and E are congruent. So how can I prove that? What could I do to prove that B and E are congruent? What if I asked you to do that? Well, here's what I want you to learn today. Are you ready for this? I want you to understand, move this out of the way here. I want you to understand this. Think about this for a second. Let's go back a page. 
Remember, look, whenever you know that two triangles are what? Congruent, you then know all of their parts are congruent. So with that in mind, let's see if I can prove that these two triangles are congruent. Look, I have an angle, a side, and an angle congruent to an angle, a side, and an angle. So right now, if I wanted to, I could definitely state that triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle, and I'll be careful, line it up carefully, A is first with one slash, so D comes first over here. B is second with no slash, so E comes second with no slash. C is third with two slashes, so F goes third with two slashes. Because of, because of angle, side, angle, I could definitely state that these two triangles are congruent, right? Angle, side, angle. And now look, as soon as I state that these two triangles are congruent, then I know all of their parts are congruent. So look what the second letter is, B. Look what the second letter is, E. So I could now state what? Angle B is congruent to angle E. Do you see how I did that? Listen, students, I wanted to prove that B was congruent to E. And the only way to do that was to first prove that the two triangles were congruent. And once I stated the two triangles were congruent, based on this reason right here, I then could state that all these parts are congruent. A is congruent to D, B is congruent to E, C is congruent to F, side A, B is congruent to side D, E, side B, C is congruent to side E, F, side A, C is congruent to side D, F. And so sometimes we have to do that, okay? So with that in mind, would you please write this sentence down? Write this in your notes, please. Sometimes, in order to prove that parts of two triangles are congruent, you need to first prove that the triangles are congruent. Sometimes, in order to prove that parts of two triangles are congruent, you need to first prove that the triangles are congruent. That's a really important statement. Now, I'm going to go over four proofs for you very quickly, and they're not very hard. They're pretty simple. We're going to do them together, and then we're done for the class period, okay? So here we go. Here's the first problem we're going to do. Please copy this given down. A, B, and C, D bisect each other at point M. Write that down for your given, please. And then write down what we're going to prove. We're going to prove, I'm not sure why I wrote the word prove twice. That's not necessary, so cross that off. We're going to prove angle A is congruent to angle B. Now just watch me do this and let me help you, okay? Angle A is congruent to angle B. Now let's go ahead and take this step by step by step. All right, first thing we're going to do is what I've taught you to do. We're going to first of all pick up our given and we're going to write it on the on the picture over here. So AB right here and CD bisect each other. That means they cut each other in half. So if they cut each other in half, then I know that this segment here, AM, has to be congruent to MB because AB was cut in half. And if CD was cut in half, then I know that DM is congruent to MC. There. Now, look students, please think about this. If I want to prove that angle A and B are congruent, how could I do that? Could I not first prove that this triangle here is congruent to this triangle here? And once you prove one triangle is congruent to another triangle, then all that you have to do is simply state that angle A is congruent to angle B. So our main goal here is to first of all prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle, and then we can state that A is congruent to B. Now, do you see if any, let's brainstorm here. We know that AM is going to be congruent to MB. We know that. We know that DM is congruent to MC. Hey, I just thought of something. Remember when two lines intersect like this? Vertical angles are congruent. We've learned that. So I know that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. So look what I have. I have side, angle, side, congruent to side, angle, side. So I can definitely prove that these two triangles are congruent. All right, now I'm just kind of brainstorming right now. And how can I do that? 
side angle side so somewhere somewhere in my proof I've got to state three things somewhere in my proof I've got to state what do you see it AM is congruent to MB right I've got to state that somewhere in my proof and somewhere in my proof I've got to state what else DM is congruent to MC do you see that and now I like to use numbers for angles so I'm gonna go ahead and put a number one right here for this angle and a two right here for this angle somewhere in my proof I'm gonna to have to state that angle one is congruent to angle two once I state those three things then I can state my two triangles are congruent by side angle side and then I can state that A is congruent to B. So let's do this step by step. Step one, I picked up my given and I put on my diagram. Step two, step two, I'm going to write my given. Now I've told you before, if you don't want to write all of the stuff down from the given right here, you can just go ahead and put the word given over here also. That's fine. I don't mind that. I really don't, okay? Now, let's see. I want to state something over here. Well, let's go ahead and state this, shall we? Let's state that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Now, what's the reason for that? There's a theorem that we learned, remember? Vertical angles are congruent. Okay? So there. Circle that. I've done that one. Now, let's go on to step 3. Hey, I can definitely state that DM is congruent to MC and also in this same step I can state that AM is congruent to MB. Well Mr. Earhart how can you state those things? And guys I do know how to write. My pen is really messing up here so just be patient with me here. How can I state that? Well look at your given. Right here in step one, right here even though you didn't write it out it's up here in your given. A, B, and CD do what to each other? They bisect each other. So how can I state that DM and MC are congruent and AM and MB are con congruent? Because definition of a what? A segment bisector. Remember? A segment bisector is a segment that bisects um, or divides a segment into two congruent parts. And so because I know that A, B, and C, D bisect here, because I know that, then I can definitely state that these parts are congruent based on the definition of a segment bisector. So now I've stated this. So look at your proof. I stated this. I stated this. I stated this. So I have stated side, angle, side. So now I'm ready to go ahead and say triangle A, D, M is congruent to triangle. And let's get this right. Let's be careful. A, D, M, that would be B, C, M. So triangle B, C, M. And what's the reason for that? Side, angle, side. Now please look, students. Did you not just state that two triangles are congruent? Yes, you did. So once you state that two triangles are congruent, doesn't that mean all of their parts are congruent? And what are you trying to prove? That angle A is congruent to angle what? B. Well, look right here. What's your first letter? A. What's your first letter? B. So once you state that two triangles are congruent, you can definitely then state that their parts are congruent. So now I can definitely state that angle A is congruent to angle B. Now, here's where the CPCTC comes in. Once you state that two triangles are congruent, and then you state that some of their parts are congruent, the reason for that in your proofs is going to be this right here. Just put C, P, C, T, C. Now, if you don't like that, then don't put that. Just simply put congruent parts of triangles or something like that. I'll accept that, but most students are going to put C, P, C, T, C. And what that means is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And once you state that two triangles are congruent, you can definitely state that their parts are congruent. Okay, one down and three to go. Okay, go ahead and copy this in your notes. Given KJ is congruent to KL, angle J is congruent to angle L, I want you to prove that NJ is congruent to ML. All right? 
Now, I know you might have to pause the video and copy this down, but while you're doing all that, I'm going to go ahead and trace these triangles here. I'm going to I'm going to split the triangles up. So I'm going to go ahead and write uh, one triangle like this. Let's see if I can do this pretty well here. Not off to a very good start, am I? All right, here we go. There's one triangle right there. Here's the other triangle right here. There we go. And now let's go ahead and slide this down. There we go. Now, I would encourage you to write the diagram the way it was, like this. That's fine. But then I would also split it up if I were you. So K, J, N, and then K, M, and I guess we should slide this over just a little. K, M, L. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and ditch this diagram now. It was good for a while, but now I'm done with that. So there we go. Now, here we go. We're going to prove that uh, NJ is congruent to ML. Now, what's the, what's the first thing? No, don't, don't get all anxious here. What's the first thing we do, students? We pick up what's given to us and we write it on the diagram. So KJ is congruent to KL. So here's KJ, put a slash, congruent to KL, put a slash. Now, actually, I want to do something real quick here. I'm going to leave this diagram up there. Okay, so KJ is congruent to KL. Now, angle J, put a slash here, is congruent to angle L. There. So you've picked up your given, and you've put it on your picture. Now, look what I have so far. I have a side and an angle congruent. Do you notice, please listen to me, students, do you notice any part of the two triangles that they share? Do they share an angle or do they share a side? Would you please look carefully? Please look at this. Do they not both share angle K? Sure they do. Here's the one triangle, and it has angle K. Here's the other triangle right here, and it has angle K. Do you see how both of these triangles share angle K? So if they both share angle K, then that means this angle here is definitely congruent to this angle here. And so now, um, hope that makes sense to you. If they share say, if they share the same angle, then those two angles have to be congruent. So with that in mind, now watch carefully what I'm going to do here. So what I've done here, guys, is I've brainstormed, okay? So if I can state that these two triangles are congruent, once I state that these two triangles are congruent, I can then state that NJ is congruent to ML because they're parts of the triangles. So watch this carefully. Please watch carefully. What I have to state somewhere in my proof is angle J is congruent to angle L. I've got to state that. I've got to state that angle K is congruent to angle K. And I've got to state that JK is congruent to MK. If I can state those three things, then I have angle, side, angle, congruent to angle, side, angle. So, how in the world can I definitely do this? Well, please watch carefully. Let me go ahead and do this real quick. There we go. Notice in your given, you already have two of these already stated right here. This is stated right here. This should be KL, shouldn't it? Sorry about that, KL. I was wondering, I was like, where is that KL? This should be uh, JK and KL. So this should be KL. There we go. Okay, notice this is already stated right here in your given. And this right here is already stated in your given right here. So the only thing that's not stated in your given is this right here. So it really shouldn't be too hard. So watch carefully what we do here, okay? Here's your statements. Here's your reasons. Now, number one, of course, is our given. So I'm going to write very quickly, KJ is congruent to KL. That's my given. And angle J is congruent to angle L. That is my given. Okay? So look, you just checked off two of them. Boom, boom. The only thing left that we have to state now in our proof is angle K is congruent to angle K. We can do that. 
angle k's congruent to angle k. It's the same angle. Remember, whenever we state the same things congruent to the same thing, what do we call that property? We've used it quite a few times now in the past. Remember, we call it the reflexive property. So angle k is congruent to angle k. It's called the reflexive property. So look, I stated all three things. I stated this, I've stated this, and I've stated this. So if I've stated all three things, then I definitely can state now that my one triangle, J, K, N, is congruent to my other triangle, L, K, M. And what would the reason be? Well, look, angle, side, angle, congruent to angle, side, angle. And now once you state that two triangles are congruent, you can then state their corresponding parts are congruent, and we just talked about that. So what are we trying to prove here? We're trying to prove NJ is congruent to ML. Well, look, here's NJ right here. See it? Here's NJ, and what's right here? ML right there. So we can definitely state that NJ is congruent to ML. And remember, once you state that two triangles are congruent, you can then state that their parts are congruent. What would the reason be? C, P, C, T, C. All right, let's go on to another one. Again, you might have to pause the video, you might have to, the video, you might have to rewind it and watch it a couple times, but this is some really, really, really good stuff. It's not easy, but it's good stuff, and it's stuff you need to see over and over and over. Okay, so here we go. All right, we have this proof, and then this proof, and then that should be it, I believe. That's not right. Let's see what we've done. That's the one we just did. So we have this one here and this one here, and then we're done. So two more. Okay, would you go ahead, please, and uh, write this in your notes. Given angle SPR is congruent to QRP, and also angle Q is congruent to S, that's your given. Prove that angle QPR is congruent to angle RSPRS, okay? And then go ahead and draw this picture in your notes. Now I go ahead and get started right away, so if you need to pause the video, please feel free to do that. The first thing I would do if I were you is I would split the two triangles up like I've done there. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put P, Q, R is one triangle. The other triangle is P, S, R. There's the other triangle. Okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this and pull this down here just for a second to get it out of the way because that's not the main thing we're going to be using. The main thing we're going to be using would be these two triangles here. So I'm going to slide these up here about right here. That'll work. And that's not what I wanted to do. Alright. Yeah. That'll have to work for now. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and do this. Um, first of all, let's pick up our given and let's mark it over here on our two triangles. Angle SPR, so SPR, put one slash here, is congruent to QRP, so QRP, so this angle right here. Also, angle Q is congruent to angle S. Two marks here, all right? Make that a little better. Two marks here. Now, do you notice anything that these two triangles are sharing? Do you notice any sides or any angles they share? Well, I do. Look. Notice they both share this side right here. Here's one triangle. Comes down, comes over. And we have this side right here. Then the other triangle comes down and comes over. And they share this side here. Do you all see that okay? So if they share those sides, then I can definitely state that this side here this side here is congruent to this side here. So look what I have. I have angle, angle, side, congruent to angle, angle, side. So I can definitely state that these two triangles are congruent, and once I state that they're congruent, then I can state that these two angles are congruent because of corresponding angles, um, corresponding parts being congruent. So let's go ahead and brainstorm. Are you ready? Somewhere in our proof we have to state that angle Q is congruent to angle S. Alright? And then somewhere in our proof, we're going to have to state that angle R, I guess we'll say, angle R is congruent to angle P. Somewhere we've got to state that. Okay? 
And then somewhere in our proof, we've got to state that PR is congruent to PR. We've got to state those three things. And then we can state the two triangles are congruent. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is this. We always list out our given. So I'm going to go ahead and put angle SPR. Angle, hold on one second, please. Angle SPR is congruent to angle QRP. And also, angle Q is congruent to angle S. And of course, that is my given. Okay? Now, look what we've done so far. Angle Q is congruent to angle S. See it right there? So, check that off. Now, look at R and P. Be careful here. Do you see angle R? What's another name for angle R? QRP. See it? QRP. And what's another name for angle P? S. PR. So when I say right here that angle SPR, SPR is congruent to QRP, QRP, that's the exact same thing as angles R and P. So I just stated that in my given. So I've stated this in my given, I've stated that in my given. This is the only thing left I have to state. So I'm going to go ahead and state PR is congruent to PR. And of course, whenever you state the same thing is congruent to the same thing, we call that the reflexive property. So reflexive property. And now look, we've stated all three things. We've stated all three things, so we now have angle, angle, side, congruent to angle, angle, side. So I can definitely state the triangle QRP is congruent to triangle SPR, and the reason would be angle, angle side. Now look students, once you state that these two triangles are congruent, then you're definitely welcome. Let me go back a page and another page. Let's see, did I mess up here? Where was I at? Here we go. You're definitely welcome to state, once you state two triangles are congruent, you're welcome to state that their corresponding parts are congruent. So you can definitely state now that angle QPR, which is what you're trying to prove, is congruent to triangle P R S and the reason of course is is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent C P C T C. Hey, I know this is tough. I'm listen on tests and quizzes. I'm going to be amazingly fair to you guys, but it's still important you see these over and over and over, whether you like them or not. Okay, it's geometry, and believe me, a track one geometry class will be a lot harder than this. Okay, all right, one more proof, and then we're finished for the class period. Now on this proof here, I want you to go ahead and copy the problem down. So pause the video if you need to and copy this whole thing down. And then you're going to do a lot of it on your own. Okay? So I'm going to keep talking, but you need to pause the video when you need to. For example, go ahead and copy this down. And when you're done doing that, here's the first thing I want you to do on your own. I want you to split these two triangles up. So pause the video, split these two triangles up, then look up here and, and play the video and see if you did it right. As you can tell, I'm having a really difficult time with this. I'm going to make mine a little more vertical. There's that one. And there's that one. Okay. So hopefully you split your triangles up correctly. That's the first thing I wanted you to do. So A, B, C. And this would be D, E, C. All right. So I want you to split the triangles up on your own, okay? Now, number two, on your own, so pause the video if you need to. On your own, I want you to pick up your given, and I want you to mark it on your two triangles here. So if you want to pause the video and do it on your own, or watch me do it, whatever, but I want you to pick up your given and write it over here on your two triangles. A, B, C, so this angle here is congruent to D, E, C, so D, E, C, so there we go. <coughs> Also, CB is congruent to CE. So here's CB, put a slash here. And here's CE, put a slash here. Okay, good. 
Did you do all that on your own? Hopefully you split the two triangles up on your own. Hopefully you picked up your given and you put it on the diagrams on your own. If so, you did all of that on your own. You're doing good, okay? Now next, let's see here. Do we see any, any parts these two triangles share? Well, it looks like they both have angle C. Do they not? It looks like both triangles share angle C. Like this triangle here comes down, up, and over. There's angle C. This one comes down, over, and up angle C. So it looks like to me both triangles share angle C. So somehow we should be able to state that angle C is congruent to angle C. Do you all see that okay? So here's the next thing I'd like you to do. I would like you to pause and say to yourself, how could I state that these two triangles are congruent? Would it be side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg? Go ahead and answer that, and then look up here. I'm going to write it right here. Think about that for just a second, and then go ahead and look here. Okay, here's what it would be. It would be angle, side, angle, because you have an angle, side, angle congruent to an angle, side, angle. So our goal is to prove that these two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. Now here's the next thing I want you to do on your own. We're going to brainstorm for a second. List out everything that we have to prove. In other words, list out everything that we have to state. I wonder if I can slide this out of the way, just for a little bit here. Give me some room. I think I can do that. Okay, now on your own, list out the three things that we're going to have to state over here in our proof to be congruent, okay? Uh, I know one thing we're going to have to state in our proof is angle A, B, C is congruent to angle... Uh, DEC. And somewhere in our proof, we're going to have to state that CB is congruent to CE. CB and CE, those two sides. And then somewhere in our proof, we're going to have to state that angle C is congruent to angle C. Angle C. All right? So, first of all, I'm going to write my given, and I'm going to pull my Block back over here real quick and look at my given. That's what I thought. A, B, C, D, E, C. Okay, very good. So in your notes, you should already have the given written down. And if you notice in your notes, we have A, B, C is congruent to D, E, C. All right? And then C, B is congruent to C, E. And that's your given. Well, look, guys, that's two out of the three already done. Check, check. The only thing left we have to state in your proof is angle C is congruent to angle C. There, I just did it. Check. Now, what is your reason when you state that, that the same things are congruent to each other? We call that reflexive. And now look, you've stated all three things. So we're ready to use what? Angle, side, angle. So now I can state that triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, C, and the reason is angle, side, angle. Cool. And now I forget what we were trying to prove. We're trying to prove that A, B is congruent to D, E. And look, it's right here. Look, students. What's the first two letters in your triangle, A, B? What's your next two letters? D, E. So we can definitely state in step four that A, B is congruent to DE because once you state that two triangles are congruent, you can then state that all of their parts are congruent by what reason? Well, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, this has been a grueling class hour. I'm not dumb. I know that. And I dreaded this. I knew it was going to be tough for me to do via a video and for you to do listening. But you know what? You've got to see these proofs over and over and over. And I think you should be really scared if I told you I was going to give you four or five or six of these on your next test. I don't do that, okay? But it's still good for you to see this. Students, you have to see this to do geometry. This is part of geometry. Okay? I didn't write geometry. It's just what it's all about, okay? And so it's good that you saw these four proofs. Now, here's the homework. You don't have to write this down 
if you don't want to. This is what you're going to do tomorrow in class. But some of you might have wanted to get a head start. So if you want to get a head start tonight, write this down. If you don't, then don't write it down. Understand the last three problems on this homework assignment are proofs, okay? So if you want to start on this tonight, feel free to. If you don't want to, that's fine. We're going to work on this the whole class hour tomorrow. Have a good day. I hope I've not fried your brains too badly, and I will talk to you guys on Thursday.